better. And there we go. All right, cool. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to our uh, one of our monthly webinars today. We'll be talking about business continuity planning, a uh, very important topic. Uh, as always, I have Lee Kennedy with me here today uh, to discuss this uh, important time. Lee, you doing all right today? Everything going on well with you? Can't complain. How about yourself? Uh, not too bad. Uh, ready to kick it off on this uh, extremely important topic. Um, as always, if you are uh, joining us live, then uh, you know feel free to ask questions using the Q and A, uh, and you know put them out there. We'll do our best to answer them. I'd love to answer them during the the webinar if we can, and if not, then uh, you know we'll answer them at the end. So uh, use that Q and A box uh, that Zoom provides you uh, down there in the bar if you're attending live. So. So uh, important topic today, and I sort of want to throw it out there first of all about, you know, business continuity plan. What is it? Uh, you know, business continuity plan is really a process a company undergoes to create, create a prevention and recovery system from potential threats such as natural disasters or cyber attacks. It's designed to protect personnel and assets and make sure they can function quickly when disaster strikes. So, I know, Lee, we do a lot of assessments, network assessments, security assessments. Uh, where do you feel like companies are with business continuity right now? Uh, most of the time, they're at, you know, the, the base level. There's no continuity plan uh, with most clients that we see. And here's, here's the confusing thing, uh, and this might be in your slideshow later on. Business continuity isn't necessarily an IT problem. Now, IT is a section of it. Yeah, you know, but it's really bigger than that. It's a whole continuity plan for your whole company for all aspects of it. And rarely do people have a plan if uh, things were to go to go down or a natural disaster were, were to hit. Uh, they might have a plan up here, but it's not tested. It's not documented, and there's you know no assignments or roles or responsibilities uh, distributed. Yeah, I would say this is a a, a really big. Uh, area that needs improvement in most companies we work with because uh, they generally focus a lot on on disaster recovery, the the IT part. Hey, we got to get our systems back up. Well, that's great. Well, what happens next? Because you know we I know we've seen situations uh, you know with one of our clients where you know they were uh, you know a victim of a ransomware attack. Uh, you know, we got their servers back up, but that didn't mean that they could actually begin conducting business. And and what we mean by conducting business, just to clarify that, uh, you know, that means hey, you can pay your bills, uh, you can post payments, you can process payroll, uh, you can communicate with your vendors, you can maintain some type of processing capability or operational capability within your business, despite you know, being uh, in the middle of or going through uh, some type of, of adverse event. So, you know, we, we see, I really separate disaster recovery and business continuity is two separate things, uh, just simply because they are so different. Disaster recovery is, like you said, more of an IT function. Get the systems back up, recover the data, recover the systems. To me, business continuity is a much broader uh, organizational plan because it can involve functional areas uh, from a lot of different key people have to be involved in doing that. It's more functional, I would say. Um, you know, and, and you always have to remember, you know, we rarely get any kind of, uh, you know, notice that this actually is going to strike. So uh, we always have to have a, that's why it's so important to have a plan uh, because there are all kinds of things that can happen. And, and we'll talk about those risks in a few minutes in a little more detail, but that's why it's important you have at least some kind of plan to keep your business going uh, and facing uh, some any type of disaster. So uh, let's sort of talk through here. So when you think about a company, you've got, uh, you know, a management group, you know, sometimes you'll have, uh, in some cases, the CIO, the director of IT, maybe a vice president of IT, you have the owners, the stakeholders, and you know they they have all these concerns going through uh, you know their daily day to day you know whether it be about sales or revenue but they also have to be in the business of managing risks uh, they have to look at the organization and find out hey what are the risks to our business operations 
And we think about what those bit, those risks are, and we'll talk each through each one of those uh, more individually. They have to make sure they can identify those because they're always going to be a concern, uh, you know, within the organization. And these are, I would say, Lee, when you agree, they're pretty common across most businesses. Absolutely. So looking at the first one, natural disasters. I know we live in, uh, we're in the Southeast. So what are some of the natural disasters that we face here? Tornadoes, flooding, flash floods, um, you know. Hurricanes. Uh, yeah, on, on the brink of, you know, hurricanes and stuff like that. We're central Alabama. So they usually hopefully die off before they get to us. But yeah, it's still, it's still a possibility. Yeah, I would say weather for us in our area uh, is a is a big factor. Is a big risk to businesses. Now, now, Lee, you came from Wyoming. What are some risks that you maybe see for businesses up there in that part of the country? Yeah, mainly like blizzards and you know whiteouts and, and stuff like that. Uh, we don't have tornadoes and stuff like that, but mainly yeah. you know getting snowed in and losing power and all that, all that stuff. And then that can go on, I guess, for days and weeks. You know, in that part of the country as well. You're a little more prepared for it up there than you are here, but yes, yeah. Yeah, I know. Down here we get just a thin little <laughs> glaze of, you know, a couple of ice passages and everything uh, shuts down. So, so natural disasters are always, I think, a category of risk that these individuals have to consider with their businesses. You know, fire is always a risk. Uh, you know, uh, flooding, we don't see that as much, but hey, we do get flash floods. We get these tropical rainstorms that come in and produce you know, large amounts of rain, uh, you know, in short amount, in short amount of time that can flood your business. And the lightning, how big is it? Uh, we faced that one a lot. And we've seen yeah. many people become victim of lightning. I've seen more equipment get wiped out by lightning, you know, than anything, than anything else. That's our biggest loss of hardware right there, lightning strikes. Yeah, well, I know even recently we talked to one of our colleagues. They uh, had a lightning strike uh, near their business and they lost switches firewalls, yeah. you know, wiring and cabling equipment, you know, all those things can be affected adversely by, uh, you know, you know, a bolt of lightning hitting, uh, not just hitting your building, but even hitting near your building can be uh, very, very uh, detrimental. And then, of course, tornadoes, uh, you know, this is something we, we see quite a bit uh, during both the, the late winter, early winter, late fall, and also during the spring that, uh, can, you know, be devastating to infrastructure, uh, you know, take out internet connections, take out power, you know, all these things. Uh, and even, I would say, even deny access to certain areas. Uh, and we're actually facing a natural disaster with just the recent passing of Hurricane Sally down south. Uh, you know, I think everyone wasn't, I think there were a lot of people who weren't really prepared for that because it went, you know, the early forecast said, hey, it was going far west. And yeah. That wasn't the case. <laughs> uh, it actually moved a little bit east. So, you know, being prepared, you know, we have to look at the risk and actual disasters for our businesses. Uh, there are always risks to business operations depending on your business. You've got to consider that as a risk category. Uh, what about cyber attacks? You know, any thoughts on that as far as risks? Just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than the weather. A, you don't see them coming. Uh, you don't know how long they're there. You don't know what information they grab. So that's, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, I think in most cases we see, you know, cyber, cyber attacks are built around uh, denying your systems from working or having some kind of denial piece to it. Either that, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a denial of service through the internet. They're flooding your, your peripheral or your perimeter with, you know, packets to deny your internet connectivity. Maybe they've encrypted files or programs that then deny you access to those programs and use of those programs. So these are, I think this is probably one of the more, uh, you know, more recent risks that you have to consider as part of your business continuity plan is that, hey, if you're a victim of a major cyber attack uh, and how are you going to conduct business? Because I know Lee, we've seen, you know, several companies become victims in, in the media, but even seen some locally, hey, they can't conduct business. Uh, you know, their systems are not available. They And even, in, in fact, they may can, uh, you know, have the ability to recover their uh, their data, but that could take, sometimes that may take a while. And during that time, there's things they just can't do uh, within their business. 
Uh, so yeah. that's where I think backups are a big deal. And I can't uh, go through without uh, a pandemic. So uh, this is very fresh in our minds. So what are some things we've seen companies do in, in light of the pandemic, ongoing pandemic this year to help, sure that, help ensure that they have continuity of business operations? We've been in the throes of that. So yeah. good discussion there. Yeah, the obvious one is remote work and being able to facilitate remote work so you can continue day-to-day uh, -day operations. That's the biggest one we've seen. Uh, been fortunate enough to easily provide it to our clients. But um, that's the big one. Um, and just having a, you know, I think this, 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 is, this one's unique. It's the first time I know in my lifetime that we've gone through a, a pandemic like this. So it's kind of interesting to see what uh, moves companies make to try to retain business or uh, even grow business at, at this moment um, outside of IT, you know, just trying to st keep the doors open and, yeah, you know, at a limited capacity, get people in and out or, you know, depending on the business. It's, uh, it's been interesting. Yeah, I mean, when we look at some of this, the technology piece, which is what we've been exposed to most, I think, most people wanted to conduct their business from home or work remotely. And I know in our experience, we found that there were some companies who were set up for it. They are somewhat prepared for it. Uh, maybe they already did remote work. Uh, they already had some things hosted in the cloud. It would made it a lot easier transition for them. Then on the, on the flip side, we had, you know, some, we saw some companies just scrambling to purchase whatever laptops were available, uh, grabbing machines from wherever they could, sending people home with them, uh, you know, and not, you know, none of them being trained how to use VPNs and really in, in a lot of ways they weren't very prepared uh, to work from home, which was, you know, primarily one of the ways that we continue doing business or they continue doing business. But you also have to look at the different types of industries that are affected that hey, they had to pivot around, you know, certain things. I don't know if that was part of their continuity plan. You know, if you're a restaurant and you're saying, hey, you know, we can't have people in a restaurant. We're just going to go to, you know, true online business or, or online pickup. Uh, so there are some things like that we saw. Uh, so pandemic is definitely something we're not used to seeing, uh, you know, but definitely something we've had to deal with. Now, what about man-made disasters? Uh, you know, what do you mean by man-made? Like a mistake? You know, somebody makes a crucial mistake in the office and like, oh, no, I just wiped out, you know, all of our, all of our data. Uh, what, else did, what else did you have in mind for man-made? I kind of well, on several things that I put there. One, I mean, obviously in the industrial uh, realm, it could be some kind of environmental disaster. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe uh, a train derails, or maybe uh, you know a car accident takes out a you know the the uh, power pole outside to cut the fiber. Yeah. Um, also, think about configuration changes on the systems. I mean, we've seen on on occasions where hey, we make a change to a server, or you make a change to a switch, and it takes down the entire network, and I've I've never done that before in my life. Well, I didn't say you have. I'm just playing. I have done that. <laughs> but I mean, those those are man-made disasters. It's, it's it can be self-inflicted wounds. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we have to consider those risks, and we have to put processes in place to prevent them. But uh, you think there there's a lot of uh, you know things that happen that are man-made. Uh, you know, I think I've seen industrial explosions, spills. Uh, you know, I worked in uh, the petroleum industry for a while, and yeah, that was always part of our continuity plan is what if we couldn't make it to the plant? You know, how would we source product? Where would we store it? You know, if our primary uh, plant was, uh, you know, not available, we can't get to it. Uh, you know, where if there's a huge fire there, which was always possible, uh, you know. Yeah, I think, I think the, the moral of all this, you're not going to see it coming. And, and, and if you don't have a plan, when these show up, you're not going to be ready. So depending, you know, depending on whatever the situation is, you need to have a blanket plan to cover some of these scenarios. It's yeah. possible to do them all, but a general plan is going to go a long way. I think a really good risk analysis is for business. Hey, what can happen to us? You know, what is most likely to happen? And uh, at least having a good idea of what those risks are and including them in your business continuity plan. So when you look at the stakeholders, the CIO directors, I mean, you know, their problem is they have to manage all these risks, you know, or whichever risk may be applicable to them. And part of those risks go into their business continuity plan and how their business continuity plan really 
determines two things. It either they're going to be resilient and they're going to continue to operate and they're going to save their business or likewise, there's going to be tragedy and they're going to go, they're either going to suffer tremendous loss in their business. Uh, and then it can be not just financial loss, but it could be, uh, you know, loss of employees, you know, loss of key vendors, key customers, uh, you know, all those things can come into play, but you know, that how they approach the plan, how they write it up, how they, you know, do that planning is really what's going to determine what can happen. And, and usually it's either they, they come through just fine, they survive, or in mean times that may not. So, uh, you know, I, I grabbed this quote, uh, you know, from uh, I think Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, you know, sort of through is that their plans are worthless, but planning is everything, uh, you know, we can't plan for everything, but the fact that we go through the planning process helps us understand risk, also helps us understand what we need to do to be resilient in, in, uh, in light of, of having those risks be bare upon us. Uh, so it's a very great distinction because when you're planning for an emergency, you must start with the one thing, the very definition of emergency is that it is unexpected, therefore it's not going to happen the way you're planning. So uh, your plan may not be the plan you need, but if you've got the team together, you sort of have an idea of, of what it's going to look like, I still think you're much better off in the long run uh, than not having anything at all, uh, than just being caught, uh, you know, in the middle and like, what do we do? <laughs> yep. So, yep. so when we look at this, uh, you know, this is sort of a, a call to action to, uh, you know, our listeners, you know, if faced with an adverse event in your organization, do you have a plan to help save it from tragedy? You know, if something were to happen right now, you know, would you have that plan available to you? And it really can be two ways. One, uh, you know, we look at, hey, I don't have a plan to help me get started. So if you're someone without a plan, well, how can you get started with that plan? And these are some things that, uh, you know, we came up with that I think are, are pretty important. Uh, you have to have a good scope of the plan. What are your key business areas and function? Uh, and that may not just be operational. It is probably going to have to do with, uh, you know, when you look across your business at HR, you look at accounting, you look at the functions within accounting, such as accounts receivable, accounts payable, you look at payroll, um, you may have to look at inventory, warehouse management. So you really have to have a lot broader view of your business and like we said in the beginning of the uh the webinar this is different from a just a disaster recovery plan this is a hey we've got to continue doing business plan so key business areas and functions which include it uh, you've got to be able to do that so lee what are some things when you think of just continuing to business with it what are some things we have to think about uh you know if we need to continue business operations, even in our own business, what do, what's the one thing we've got to have probably to continue working? Yeah, got to have an internet connection. Yeah, we got to uh, have. Stop. Yeah, yeah, got to have a place to do business, whether that be home, or you know, the office, or a rented office, or a shared space. You know, to, to get that internet connection, uh, we got to have the hardware to conduct business. We got to have computers. Yep. Um, so that's the whole thing. I know we, we've talked about that through our continuity plan is, you know, uh, getting this stuff, how quick can we get it? You know, where we store spares, um, trying to disperse that stuff out. Yeah, that, that's a, a key. I, that's, I think those are some key areas. One, uh, you know, I think you've got to have, you got to sort of rebuild your IT infrastructure to support these business areas. Uh, you've got to have an alternative place to go to work. What if your business is burned to the ground? Where if you're a victim of the riots we've seen, what if, uh, you know, a tornado takes it out? Uh, you know, there there are all kinds of scenarios we can build in our mind where you know, the place you normally go to conduct business no longer is, exists or it's not accessible. So you've got to have an alternative place to go to have your employees meet up so they can start doing business. And sometimes, I know in the plans that I've written, that place is not going to be and, and have the same comforts that you're used to uh, in your own office. So it may not have as fast as an internet connection. It may not have as much space. I know in my continuity plan, it was the best I could do was say, hey, we could probably bring in, rotate two groups of staff 
Uh, we cannot accommodate the entire customer service department, maybe just half of them. Uh, so you've got to really sort of think through that and then look at resources that are available to you. Uh, you know, equipment, you know, may be hard to find. You know, you have to think about that as far as how much you invest in spares, uh, you know, depending on how uh, wide, widespread some type of event happens, you know, may not have access to power, internet, switches, computers, things like that may not be accessible to you. So it's really, that's another reason it's good to look at your plan, what do you decide what you need, what hardware you need, what services you need, uh, and how those uh, services will be delivered to not only your employees, but also your end users. Uh, dependencies between those areas and functions. So when you think within a business, uh, you know, there's all types of dependencies that are created, uh, you know, within the, within the company, you know, you can't, you know, you cannot receive and deposit cash if you're not selling anything uh, or if you can't deliver the product. So not only do you have to look at the different areas and functions, but you got to look and see, make sure that they can work together. Uh, you know, across the board, you got to make sure your processes stay intact, that you can operationally deliver your services, but also bill for those services, also collect cash for those services, because those are going to be some important areas as you work through your plan. The acceptable downtime for each function. This is something we, we've seen, I think, and have many discussions with the clients. Hey, how long can you be down before it becomes a problem? Uh, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Uh, and typically, the answer is we can't be down. Can't be down. You know, if you're down, you're yeah. losing revenue most most of the time, and you know, typically you'll want to stick a dollar amount to that uh, per hour. But you know, when it comes down to it, nobody wants to be down. No, being down is not acceptable. Um, that's where the plan comes in to limit the the time uh, or the limit the amount of downtime. Yeah, you know, I think. Most, uh, you know, most companies, especially small businesses, downtime is very detrimental to their future uh, because especially they could be in a very competitive business. Uh, they could be, you know, who knows what their situation might be financially, uh, you know, so it is very important to understand, hey, how long can we be down, yep. you know, and what can help bridge us till we get back up? Uh, you know, some companies can last a little bit longer than they have business interruption insurance, which is also an option. Uh, but you have to look across your business and and sometimes you have to make decisions, especially if you look at, you know, maybe different divisions you, you may have within your business, their function, their contribution to revenue. Uh, you know, you have to think through a really look at a business view to see, well, what's acceptable? Uh, you know, there may be some, uh, I would say some revenue streams, some, some areas of your business that, hey, they're probably just, you know, 20% of your business. Well, we're going to focus our effort on the other 80. So those are some decisions that those stakeholders have to make as far as what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Maybe and compliance. Lot, maybe there's contracts a, involved. There's things yeah. like that that could be involved as well. And a lot of time that that will drive or it will actually shape the continuity plan and what it looks like your acceptable downtime will, will really, do you need a small plan or do you, you know, can you, can you only withstand an hour of downtime or can you withstand three days of downtime? Two different continuity plans, even if you're doing the same business, what's acceptable to you and you got to build your continuity around that. Yeah. And I think these are, these are all things I feel like clients need to do up front, you know, to start Absolutely. the planning process is, Hey, dependencies but what's acceptable and, and it may be different and may also help them identify areas within their infrastructure you know within their personnel that need to be shored up because when you think about downtime and is it going to lose revenue is it going to what the costs are associated with it it could be uh you know they may find that that downtime number is a lot lower than what they what they want it to be uh and we do see you know sometimes uh, uh, you know, it is something that has to be discussed internally among all groups. Uh, having a plan to maintain operations, we sort of touched on this a few minutes ago, but, you know, where are they going to go? Uh, you know, who's going to, you know, perform the work? Uh, you know, in what, do you, do you have access to equipment you need? Especially if you're, I think of manufacturers are the hardest ones here because usually they've got machines set up 
specifically to to produce a product you know and, and is and they're very sensitive to change uh may be difficult to diversify operations but definitely something you need to think about. i think for services though it's a bit easier uh, i know with with you know i think of our continuity plan and some others that were in the service industry for us during the pandemic we just went home to work you know our systems are set up to allow us to do that we can continue doing business in light of shutdowns in light of uh you know quarantine and all those kind of things we're able to maintain operations but you have to find out you know what's important to your business and and then what and you know, what what areas you you want to maintain operations in and what areas you can uh you may not be able to do all of them because we've seen even some uh you know manufacturing companies have to shut down their whole entire plant because one or two people get diagnosed or test positive for COVID 19. uh so you you know that that's a huge problem you know and maybe you can get around that maybe you can't maybe business continuity can help you depend on your business and lastly key vendors leaders and services uh you know we have to get those identified absolutely uh, i think the big one too I, I think leaders within your own organization basically delegating responsibilities uh, yes you know, your downtime is probably going to be minimal so you're going to have to do a lot of stuff in a short period of time preferably and it's going to be too much for one person to execute all of it so it needs to be delegated down uh to, to other leaders in your team on your team yeah i agree and when we do consulting engagements with clients and we talk about disaster cover we talk about business continuity one of the, the key things we ask them to do is to develop a team a functional mm -hmm. team of someone who can uh, you know, work with, you know, maybe it's safety, uh, HR, uh, maybe someone needs to talk to the media. So you need a communications director. Uh, you need to have someone who can, has the authority to spend money uh, because you may have to, uh, you know, make some financial investments or make some decisions and purchase equipment or purchase services. So you need someone that has that kind of authority. So, you know, it really, you really do have to look across your, your internal resources and find out who's in the best position to do what within that plan and I think even got to have a backup behind that because I've run tabletop exercises in scenarios where hey the key people we're going to look to are not available you know maybe maybe they're part of the disaster uh, maybe they were injured in disaster maybe they're out of town you can't get in touch with them uh, you have to even think along those lines uh, when you're looking at this plan uh, and and also with vendors um you, you need to get in touch with the vendors have a relationship with them you know make them part of your plan and make sure they know they're part of your plan i know we have our company listed in several dr plans several continuity plans because we're their it resource they look to us for guidance and help you know in that part of their plan about hey what are we going to do about our systems how do we get our internet back up how are we going to deploy you know a second site if we need to uh, so you really need to know who your key vendors are uh and and have them as part of your plan uh and that includes anything from your internet service provider key applications professional services legal i mean think through at that level of detail that way when you need to execute that plan all that information is at your fingertips and you're not just scurrying around trying to get it all together and, and make sure that they're going to be able to, to facilitate too i mean if there is a natural disaster there could be 40 other companies trying to lean on their services Great. are you are they going to have room in their colo or are they going to have you know capacity to help you out at that point in time it's just something to consider uh, well i know that goes, that goes into the relationship you mentioned you know make sure absolutely that, make sure know. It's not, you know your continuity plan doesn't say hey call advocates it if this happens and we've never talked to you before because we may be dealing with you know 100 other clients at the, at the moment it's just yeah and, and we saw that sort of happen during the pandemic. I think March and April, we saw a huge influx yeah. and we sort of expected it. You know, we were oh, we probably a couple of weeks ahead of it. We were ready for it. You know, that we knew that, hey, all these people could be going to work from home. Uh, you know, we want to make sure, hey, we had everything set up. We were ready to go. And, uh, you know, and, and sure enough, you know, we were a, a vital part of the continuity plans for many clients because they were like, hey, we need you to train somebody to use a VPN. We need you to install the VPN client. Yeah. Uh, we need you, you know, we have to also worry about security. We have to put uh, two-factor authentication on the VPN. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, uh, yeah. you know, you have to depend on vendors to do. And, and let's go back and look at the companies that were trying to do that, that had workstations. 
You know, they were trying to get laptops ordered. Well, they couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't. All the all the manufacturers were, you know, had their own issues to deal with. They're trying to fulfill the flood of orders that that, that came in. So you had people, you know, unhooking desktops and taking them home. You know, it was kind of a scramble for 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 some folks. Yeah, I mean, we saw lead times with Dell. I think go from what we normally see as a week for a laptop to like three weeks, and then it jumped to like two months really yeah. quickly. Yeah. So uh, it got out of hand real quick. And so that's something uh, you need to think about in your planning. You know, it, it, hey, we're going to go work from home. Well, we probably need to invest in, in the infrastructure, the tool sets, and the, uh, and the market for us. Absolutely. So these are, I think, some great ways to get started. If you don't have a plan, you need to incorporate these four or five bullet points to help you get started. Uh, to at least initiate discussion. Now let's think about, well, I have a plan. Well, what do I do next? We've got a continuity plan. We've got a DR plan. Here's a couple things uh, I thought of uh, that you need to consider if you're in that group. One is testing. Test your plan. Uh, go through your plan. Uh, do tabletops. Sit down with your continuity team and go through a tabletop exercise. Hey, we just had XYZ happen. You know, there's a tornado that hit one of our sites. Um, you know, we've got a, 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 disaster, a natural disaster. We just lost power. Uh, whatever it may be, use that list of risks that you're going to gather and figure out, hey, how can we tabletop this and walk through our plan? That way, everyone's a little more familiar with how the plan works and it, you're not pulling it out of the desk for the first time, you know, and looking at it and having people surprised, oh, Oh, I'm in charge of this or I'm in charge of that. They know what they're in charge of. They know their job, uh, you know, and, and that goes into sort of a simulation. I know we've talked about this with uh, some of our clients is uh, and not just simulating a, a continuity situation, but even simulating, hey, the loss of a key person, the key person, maybe they can't be available for this. And you have to rely on your, your second tier management or other people to pick up the ball, uh, you know, that they may not be available for you. So, testing tabletop simulation you need to spend some time doing that you know there's hey if you spend one to two days a year going through your plan and, and doing tabletops doing simulation i promise you you're going to be better than probably 90 percent of the companies out there because this is not something that we see happen very often and that they sit there and talk through it like they should and then lastly review update and improve as time goes on, you know, your continuity, your continuity plan will change. Technology will change, processes will change, and how you recover from those will differ. So it's definitely uh, at least annually review it um, to, 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 you know, just to go over it. Because like I said, technologies change, personnel changes, um, you know, processes. So something that has to be done at least, I would say, once a year. Yeah, I'd say minimal annually, but if you're in a, maybe you're in a high turnover business, maybe you've, you know, look at your business. How much has changed in your business over the last six months? Right. You know, it may be time to look at that and update that plan because, hey, if you, we had a team and, and half that team's no longer there or maybe don't, maybe they moved to different positions. Maybe you've opened four locations since then. Uh, there's a lot of things in your business that could change that should force you to review uh, your plan update it with the correct information and find ways to improve it. Uh, you know, and, and that could be, uh, I know we do a lot of strategic work with clients in thinking sort of forward thinking about, uh, you know, recovery. You know, when I think about communications, you know, we talk about hosted phone systems a lot of times because they're more resilient than if you had an on-premise system. Uh, we talk about hosted applications and, and different using the cloud as a way to help you become more resilient. And for the most part, it does. Uh, you know, it does have uh, problems every now and then. But uh, for the most part, I say you're a lot, you're going to be a lot more resilient if you don't have that equipment in your building. Because uh, most buildings and most on-premise uh, sites are not capable of withstanding some type of natural disaster or problem. So, um, but if you have a plan... Hey, go through the time to test it, improve it, do a tabletop, sit down with your team, go over it. Uh, you know, make sure you keep it up to date with your, uh, your company and, and changes in your company, changes in personnel, changes in leadership, changes in systems. Uh, you know, our business changes and, and we have to make that part of our plan overall. 
So anything else to add, Lee? You got any, any closing thoughts on this topic? I don't. If you don't have a plan, um, you know, get started on making one. A little progress can go a long way in, in an event. So uh, get started on making one. They do take time. It's nothing you're just going to be able to crank out in a couple hours in most scenarios. So uh, just take your time, do it right, and uh, contact us if you have any, any questions. Or need yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of effort that goes in creating these. Uh, it's not something you can initially just – uh, you know, pull up, pull out in in a day or so. Uh, so whatever takes place in this, if you need help with doing it, let us know. We we have consulted and worked with clients to help them build resiliency uh, within their organizations through a continuity plan. Uh, and we can also help simulate it and, and tabletop it. I love to do those exercises. They're a lot of fun, uh, you know, and, and can really help you test your plan and help you find ways to improve it. So, so if we can help you in any of those ways, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and contact us. These are uh, our contact information is, is, is here. You can contact uh, myself. Uh, email is right there. Or talk to Samantha Caroline. They'll be happy to help you consult with you and figure out how we might could help you get uh, a continuity plan in place. So, um, so I don't see any Q and a today. So I'm going to close out today with a, well, uh, thanks everyone for attending. I uh, hope to see you online uh, at some other date. We'll have some more webinars being scheduled soon. Um, and if you didn't catch us live, make sure you check us out on YouTube and social media because we'll have this video posted there soon. I'm going to end it for today. hope everyone has a great one. We'll talk to you later.